For the longest time, I was average at maths. I wasn't the person anyone would point to in class as the maths whiz. I had to work for every grade, and sometimes, even when I thought I'd nailed the test, I'd get it back and find a bunch of silly mistakes that brought my score down. I failed to score that A star in additional mathematics IGCSE when many others in my class succeeded, even after doing so many past papers. But guess what? A few years later, I scored the highest in my entire cohort for maths. I went from that frustration to an A star in A level mathematics. So what happened? I stopped just doing past papers and started debugging my own mistakes. I treated my carelessness like a problem to be solved instead of an excuse. And the single biggest game changer for me wasn't just practicing more questions, it was completely revolutionizing how I rechecked them. This is the exact rechecking strategy I developed that will eliminate those silly point-costing mistakes. Let's get into it. Now, before I share the first and most important strategy, I have a quick gift for you guys who are watching till the end. I know this stuff can be dense, so I want to make it worth your while. I've put together the complete, detailed set of mathematics A-level notes that I used to go from average to top of my cohort, and I'm giving them away for free to the first 10 people who email me. But here's the catch. The keyword you need to put in the email is hidden somewhere in this video, so you'll have to watch it all the way through to find it. For anyone after the first 10, the notes will be locked behind a paywall, so this is your chance to get them completely free. Alright, let's get into the first game-changing mistake that I used to make. Mistake 1. Rechecking at the end of the exam. What? Why would this be a mistake? Isn't it what students are told to do in every exam? Most students check their answers after they're done with all the questions in the exam with leftover time. I used to do the same, until I noticed by the end of the exam, I would be exhausted from doing all the questions and really tired and lazy to recheck. If you can relate, try doing this method. Instead of waiting till the end of the exam when I was tired and rushed, I made a new rule. The second I finish a question, I check it. This is especially important for questions with multiple parts with answers that depend on the previous parts. If you made a mistake in the first part and used the wrong answer in the next part, it will result in a domino effect of all your answers being wrong for that question. However, only do this method if you are sure you can finish all the questions within the exam period. Make sure to practice many past papers until you are confident in navigating the time limit. Important: Make sure to draw a symbol next to a question you have rechecked to indicate for yourself after you have gone through all the questions. Sometimes I found myself confused where I went wrong after I rechecked and knew the answer was wrong, so I would skip it and come back to recheck it at the end. These symbols are very important for your tired self after doing all those questions so you know which answers you're 100% sure are correct and do not have to recheck and which you need to recheck again. At this point, you might ask, how do I check lines and lines of working in a few seconds and know they're 100% correct? Keep watching for my next tips. My second mistake, rereading instead of rechecking. The biggest mistake that many students, including me, used to make was thinking that rechecking meant just quickly reading over my answers to look for mistakes. Of course they looked right, I just wrote them. My brain was just confirming its own work, skipping over the exact same logical gaps I had the first time. You have to verify your answer, not just admire it. Never do these things. Absent-mindedly read through each line of working, trying to find mistakes. Honestly, when was the last time you actually spotted a careless mistake that way? Second, don't redo your entire solution with the same method. It's a very inefficient and slow way to recheck, and you're likely to fall into the same mistakes you did on the first attempt. The time used on this method could be much better used on rechecking other questions. Instead, do these. The simple number swap. This tip is a secret weapon for algebra and formula manipulation. If you have a complicated expression that you need to verify, replace the variables with really easy numbers. For example, if you have a line of working that is very long and complicated like this, and need to simplify it in the next step, replace all the variables in the first line with easy numbers to calculate with. For example, x equals 1 and y equals 2. Do this for the first and the second line. If both lines don't give the same answer, you know they're wrong. 
This rechecking strategy saves your life in so many situations. Let's go through some examples. First, we're going to do an example with partial fractions. This is my working from a while ago on a partial fractions question. I got this final answer, but how do we know if it's the correct answer or not? My past self would have read through every line of working, trying to spot any mistake. But there's actually a much more efficient way to do this that guarantees that our answer is the correct one. First, we set our unknown variable to any easy number, for example, 1. You can also set it to 2 or 3, up to you. Then we substitute this number into the final answer that we just got. After that, you can easily input it into your calculator. And this is the value we got for fx, for this particular value of x. Now go back to the original expression. If our final answer is correct, when we substitute this value of x into the original expression, they must give the same answer, right? So let's try plugging in this value of x into the original expression as well. After putting into the calculator, we find out that the value is indeed the same. Therefore, the final answer is 100% definitely correct. And if the value comes out to be a different number, we will know that something definitely went wrong during our working and we have to recheck. If you don't believe that the answer is correct, here is the answer key showing the correct answer. The next example is expansion. This is part 2 of the same question and wow, look at those lines of working. In the last step, we had to simplify this really long line into a final answer. How do we know that this simplification is correct? Let's do the same thing. Let x be equal to a random easy number like 2. Plug in this value into the non-simplified line. Put it into your calculator and get a value for it. Then do the same with your simplified answer. We know that if the expressions are actually equivalent to each other, the values should be the same. And here is some extra confirmation from the answer key that the answer was indeed correct. My fourth mistake, trusting the process and not the result. You've spent all this time solving for x. You have a final answer, but is it actually the solution? The easiest fix ever is the ultimate reality check. Plug it back in. This is non-negotiable and so powerful. If you've solved an equation, plug your value of x back into the original equation. Does the left side equal the right side? If yes, perfect. If not, you know something's wrong. Found a derivative or integral? Use your calculator to verify it. If you are not given a value for x, use a random easy value and plug it into your calculator. Plug the same value of x into your final answer and compare with the calculator's result. Note that it's good to test with multiple values for x if possible, because some values of x might still give the same value as the calculator's result, even if your answer is wrong. Mistake 5. How to make this second nature. I want you to imagine this. You're doing a past paper for revision. After finishing up, you feel too tired to recheck. Upon checking, you find out that you made a million of the most silly mistakes, but you simply move on to the next paper, telling yourself, I won't make a careless mistake like this in the actual exam. Sound familiar? Don't worry, I'm really guilty of doing this as well. Practicing past papers isn't just about practicing your mathematics concepts. It's about practicing and simulating everything on doomsday, exam day, down to the skill of rechecking your answers. That's why you practice rechecking while doing past papers. Don't just practice answering questions, practice verifying them. Time yourself not just on the first run, but on a full run through using these techniques. This trains your brain for exam day and makes the process fast and efficient. You're not destined to make silly mistakes. It's not a personality trait. It's a habit, and habits can be broken with a better system. Try this one. I really truly hope it helps you. Good luck, you can absolutely do this. And stay tuned for that upcoming video on A-level integration techniques. I'll see you there.